I'm going to play for you a powerful video I saw on a heaven visit that will change your view of your priorities and ought to if you are like most Christians when it comes to sharing the good news for the sake of winning souls. Now there are already people posting this video as it is on their channel because the producer of it encourages that as does the testifier. This video is I'm going to be playing shortly is 13 minutes and it just may be 13 minutes that changes the kind of crown you are going to get in heaven if. However, before I do, I want to touch on a wrong this video gives a potent weapon to overcome as it helps to testify that what is going on today among some Christians is not in line with the mandate and heart of Jesus and it's time to fix that or face the wrath of God. Also, I want to take a minute here to quickly put aside a false teaching making its rounds that would make some turn away from even watching this video from the explanation they're giving that no new revelations will be added to the Bible so such heaven and hell testimonies are false doctrines and not of God. Acts 2, 16 to 18, however, make clear otherwise that such last day revelations are indeed a Bible plan of God. As you see here on the screen, it says, and in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy we must not confuse the Bible warning not to add to scriptures as the same as sharing revelations given according to God's plans in Act 2. These two situations are not the same. There is a difference. When God gives his servants information to relate, it is godly. When people out of their own minds give things, it is a sin, and it stands that way. So the only thing that we do when we hear these testimonies is we use the power of discernment to determine if it is one that the Lord has poured out if it is coming from the Spirit of God and the only way we can make that determination is examine if it lines up with the Bible. Now I have read the Bible cover to cover several times and I spend time daily reading and or hearing the Bible. I make it my bread to live on. By human certification I have a genius IQ determined when I was a young woman when I took and passed the test for Mensa, having such, despite my formal schooling, is limited. And part of the reason I was rated with such an IQ is based on my ability the Lord has blessed me with to make leaps of information and, and understanding. So I get the core meaning, an ability that would sometimes backfire on me when I would complete tests within five minutes of the start of the class tests which supposedly gave me the reward to hand in my finished test and leave early. Yet I would find myself getting scolded as if I'd handed in bad answers just to get out of the class quickly, when in fact I'd gotten all the answers right. Or I'd be scolded if they came to know I gave right answers for finishing way ahead of the rest of the class and told to go slower as if my right answers would somehow become righter by doing so. Yet the Lord will attest to this. I can be holding my missing sock in my hand and be crying to Jesus, what happened to it? I had it a moment ago. But that is another story and has nothing to do with aptitude but absent-mindedness. That is why there was no clash between the words idiot and savant. Together they can coexist and paint 
a type of human being. Joking aside, I share this thing about my genius aptitude because I have no, no college degrees and no formal Bible titles and share what are my qualifications, why you should accept my deductions on anything of the Bible. And I can tell you that what is presented here by witness Ken Paul Obieke is biblical based on my scriptural familiarity through the leading of the Holy Spirit in knowledge, wisdom, and discernment. Now the wrong I said at the start that I want to touch on briefly before playing the testimony of Witness Ken Paul OBAK is when some Christians, mostly men though not always, will rebuke or belittle a woman for teaching to them any aspect about salvation because of what Paul wrote in 1 Timothy 2.12, which is, But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. However, there is a revelation that was a complete surprise to witness Ken Paul Obieke which you will see in the testimony that shatters his mindset, that proves flesh plays no criteria to one's qualifications to teach a person about Jesus and God's plan of salvation, and as a consequence to be rewarded by Christ for such evangelistic endeavors. It is important to know that because you can't evangelize without teaching, Evangelizing is teaching about the gospel of salvation. From this revelation, you will see what the Bible tells us. That this is all that matters to Jesus, winning souls. He doesn't look at flesh, at who was the flesh who won the soul. What was the flesh evangelizing? He doesn't look, was it a woman? He doesn't then react that if the soul's gain were the results of a woman teaching to men, that the importance would then be placed on subservience more than winning souls, and that woman's preachings on the gospel to those men be counted a sin. No, the revelation you will see clearly shows it's all about winning souls to Jesus, and that we're to do the work of an evangelist, and that all who do will be accordingly rewarded. As the scripture says in Ephesians 4, 11, 12, we are being equipped by our teachers, leaders, pastors, preachers, and prophets. For what purpose? So that all of us, all saints, can build up the body of Christ. It's not so only men. It's saints, all. And as Matthew 719 and John 152 show us everybody everybody who doesn't bear fruit is going to be cut off cast to the fire that's everyone it doesn't say men it says everyone now I don't want to give it all away I want you to see it because it is powerfully said more powerful than I can say it and it isn't just about the points I came up with it's about if you don't do this task that Jesus emphasized to witness Ken Paul in this revelation whether man or woman you're not going to get to heaven and you need to see this to see what that is about my unforgettable visit to heaven. Witness Ken Paul Obieke. In this my unforgettable revelation experience, I heard the Lord Jesus say, No evangelism, no heaven. And if you are not evangelizing, you are scandalizing. Sins of omission can be more serious and dangerous than sins of commission most times. But many do not realize this fact. In a revelation visit experience to heaven, the Lord was introducing the apostles and prophets along with the cloud of witnesses to me. Peter, Paul, Stephen, and the others were there. 
I was shaking hands with them, and they were full of joy and smiles. No handshake on earth can have any meaning to me in this world after such an experience. These people who finished well and are now heavenly rewarded had their crowns of glory, full of stars symbolizing the souls they won. The way they welcomed me so happily was beyond description. I was surprised that they all knew me so very well. Beloved, it is better to be popular in heaven because of the soul saved through you than to be popular on earth which have no eternal value and reward. Friendship of the world is enmity with God. The most surprising aspect of this all to me was when the Lord introduced a saint called Stella to me, among Peter, Paul, and the others. Her crown of glory was so studded with stars, and it appeared to me as though hers was more than many others. There is no excuse from anybody for not evangelizing. If you and your money are not evangelizing, you are scandalizing. Anything you are not using to evangelize or save souls is useless, says the Lord. I became inquisitive when I saw the saint called Stella and proceeded to ask Jesus who she was, not having read or find the Bible. The kind of glory she was carrying was simply awesome. Jesus knew already that I will be surprised and will also ask about this saint that wasn't mentioned in the Bible but lived in our present dispensation and era. In Revelation chapter 4, a call was made to come up hither. We are in the last days of heaven's supernatural revelations and manifestations as foretold in every way for the end time harvest. It is one of the greatest ever granted to mankind in this borrowed time of grace. The Lord is pouring out His Spirit and is waking up the 21st century falling away churches that are slumbering and snoring so terribly. Read Revelation chapter 1. Jesus began to tell me about this saint called Stella. He said that when she was on earth, she was a cripple. But despite that condition, this saint was busy evangelizing and winning souls. What a challenge! Because she could not walk, she used her buttocks to move from place to place evangelizing. What is your excuse now? For this, she was so much honored when she finally got to heaven, her final resting place. The Lord scarcely uses the word dead, because as he said, true Christians never die. This wonderful saint, who despite her predicament, took evangelism like her very life was holding my hand and beaming with such a glorious smile when Jesus was introducing her to me. She was in her complete celestial restored body, no more deformity. Nothing on earth has meaning in heaven like souls, and only soul savers are celebrated in heaven. No one celebrates any other miracle in heaven than saving of souls, because miracles are now normal to them. All Christians are meant to walk in the miraculous, not as a big deal, but as normal. In heaven, only soul winners are celebrated champions. Christ Jesus made it clear and told me to warn the Christians that anyone who takes evangelism and soul winning lightly has no part with him. Inviting people to your hell-bound church just to merely increase membership and to boast of your numerical increase is shop-right nonsense that brings no joy to heaven. Supermarket Christianity is from the pit of hell. Jesus said, anyone claiming to be saved but not laboring to save others is sold. You are saved to save others. A tree that bears no good fruit shall be cut down and cast into the fire. Matthew chapter 7 verse 19. Anyone ashamed of Christ and his word before men is doomed. Mark chapter 8 verse 38. 
If you deny Christ before men, you are finished. Matthew chapter 10 verse 33 Every Christian is a watchman that must account for souls. Ezekiel 33 verse 6 Awake to radical true soul winning now at all cost. So much happened in the revelation experience as I have shared in some of my books. The Lord took me to my mansion and I spent some time there. He said to me, I want you to see as my witness so that you can witness to them that I have finished preparing their mansions in heaven and coming back for them as I said, but many are not yet ready. As the Lord said this, many of the mansions began to sound alarms. I asked the Lord what was going on and he replied, Many people, including ministers you least expect, are about to lose their mansions in heaven because of sin and compromise. You are here on a special assignment to warn humanity regarding eternity. Jesus showed me that Evangelism Street is the best part of heaven reserved for addicted and committed soul winners. He showed me a list of names of ministers celebrated on earth but rejected in heaven. He said, these ones have their rewards on earth and in hellfire. All ministers who the heartbeat of God which is souls is not their heartbeats are in that list, no matter who they are. I'm not a respecter of persons, but respecter of those who follow my footsteps. I came for souls, not gold. Read Revelation chapter 2. Worldliness is killing today's churches, and they think it has something to do with Christianity. What most people call evangelism or soul winning today is transferring lukewarm Christians from church to church. This is just increasing the number of the pastor's goats, not the lordship, which enables them to smile to their banks while heaven is sad. Membership of any church or religion does not write your name in the book of life. You must be genuinely born again and forsake sin or you will miss heaven. Only Jesus saves. If you are not fruit-bearing, your Christianity is fake. Heaven-minded ministers and churches are fast disappearing from the earth. This is most dangerous. What will it profit you to gain the whole world and lose your soul? The Lord told me to tell His people to start practicing living in heaven now as they are no more earth citizens but citizens of heaven. He said to me, You are already scattering if you are not gathering with me in soul winning. Where is your heart and your treasure? Jesus said, All the blessings that are making them fall prey to false prophets are already in heavenly places, waiting for their collection. Ephesians chapter 1 says, That we have been raised with Christ in heavenly places and seated with Him at the right hand of God, far above principalities and powers, with all things under the feet of Christ, and our feet because we are in Him. We are already seated on the throne of authority and power in Christ Jesus. This is the last day's warning of love. Read Revelation chapter 3. I was shown how Sister Stella was celebrated when she arrived in heaven at the end of her life on earth, as she slept in the Lord. If you see this and the glory this sister is enjoying now and for all eternity, you will know why the devil do not allow people to become soul winners, but keeps them busy with nonsense. All these entertainment churches and ministers plus the prosperity preachers are in reality hellfire embassies bringing embarrassment to heaven. After the whole experience, which I cannot narrate here but will continue in subsequent messages if the Lord permits, the Lord said to me, It is time for you to go back and share this to bring as many that are willing and obedient to heaven. 
I then said to Jesus that I would rather want to stay there in heaven with him. He said to me, If you do not go, many will not make it to heaven. I have chosen and ordained you to bring as many as possible here. Go and prepare my people for my return in the urgency of heaven. I have shown you your mansion and crown. I have given you also the mercy of David and that assures your return. You are very dear to my heart, along with the others who are also minding the mandate of heaven to depopulate hell and populate heaven. Many have failed me, and my labor shall not be in vain. Multiplied grace abound toward you. Go and bring the remnants in. He further said to me, Warn the people. They want me as Savior but not as Lord, and this cannot be possible. Now Jesus cannot be your Savior if you don't make him your Lord. Beloved, a bride is too beautiful to carry sports and wrinkle. You are either a friend of Jesus or a slave to sin and Satan. While Jesus and the others were escorting me back, I wept until I came back to this realm. Beloved, the worst thing that can happen to you is to miss heaven and end up in hell fire after Christ has done it all for you. Making heaven must be your greatest achievement on earth. Nothing on earth is worth missing the eternal beauty and glory of heaven for. My heart bleeds for those who are still playing church and religion. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior now. Repent from sin genuinely. If you miss heaven, you will not miss hell. Look for heavenly conscious churches and ministers and connect with them now. Rapture or death could be any moment. Share this in the urgency of heaven, for the time is at hand. Let it get to the ends of the earth, as commanded by Jesus Christ. This great mandate of heaven's supernatural revelation is from witness Ken Paul Obieke, a living witness of Jesus Christ, the only hope of glory with love, to see you and others in heaven. God bless you. Maranatha. Are we to say that Paul was wrong in his remark to Timothy? No, we are to recognize that Paul made clear sometimes what he had to say was his own viewpoint and not of the Lord's direct impartation. As he started that verse, I do not suffer, that's the King James. Or as the Greek says, O de epitrepo, the transliteration, nor do I permit. Here we see Paul is specifying it is he saying this and not the Lord. But some have taken this as Paul reporting the Lord said this when revelations like witness Ken Paul's, you just watched, helped to reinforce the I Paul opened that statement with so as not to stumble a sister in Christ, obedient to the mandate of the Bible, to build up the body of Christ and do the work of an evangelist. <laughs>